E Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to draw the Air Jordan 11 low step by step. We're gonna start off by doing the proportions for this shoe, then we're gonna go into the actual drawing of it. We're gonna do the outlining afterward, and then finally, it's gonna be my favorite section, the coloring stage. Now, I will admit that this drawing in particular came out a little bit sloppy, but overall, the end turned out pretty good in my opinion. Two things before we get into the video real quick. Number one, if you enjoy these how to draw videos, make sure you go ahead and you hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications. Secondly, I like to remind everybody, especially the people all the way in the back, that if you like my drawings and if you want to cop any of these stencils that I have, they're all available for free on my website, kickstart.com. And if this is your first time watching, you're like, oh my God, this video is so awesome. Well, guess what? I have like over 60 how to draw videos on the channel. I'll include a link to the playlist at the very end of this video. Now with all that being said, drum roll, please. Let's go. Before we actually go ahead and draw up the sneaker, we have to set up some guidelines to make sure the shoe looks proportionally correct. To do this, we're going to draw two squares right next to each other, and we're going to divide those two squares into top and bottom halves. Next, we're going to go ahead and add two vertical lines, one on the bottom right hand quadrant and the second one on the initial left box. Finally, we're going to add one more horizontal line that's going to divide the two bottom quadrants into halves, and this is going to give us all the guidelines we need to draw out the rest of the sneaker. I personally like to draw out the silhouette first because I feel like it's much easier to add the inner details after the outside is done. Now for the outsole, it's going to help big time to look at that last horizontal line that we made as your guide. And I understand with both the midsole and the outsole, it gets a little curvy, especially towards the toe, so just do the best you can and again, look within the quadrants that we placed. Now with the outsole, don't worry about the specific number of ridges that we have on the outsole. Just try to have like a number between, let's say, 15 and 20. Anywhere in between there is going to work just fine. But I'll tell you what, nobody's going to be like, hey bro, you're missing like two ridges over there towards the back of the heel. Like, no. Nobody's gonna do that, you're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working on the upper. Again, it gets a little bit wavy, so just use those lines as your guides. After the upper is pretty much done, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the ankle liner as well as the heel panel. Then we're gonna add those five rectangles that are gonna lead towards the end of the lace loops. And then once we have that part, we're gonna weave in those laces in between all of the lace loops. And once all of that is finally completed, you're pretty much done. Now this next stage is the inking stage. And this stage is very important for a number of reasons. One, you have to commit to the lines that you've already placed down. Because unlike pencil that you can go ahead and erase, with marker, you cannot, unless you go over it with a darker color. But if you're using black, well, I mean, there's nothing really darker than black besides tearing up the paper and starting over, okay? So unfortunately, doing this inking stage, go nice and slow until you have that rhythm where you can go as fast as you want. Like no joke, when it comes to these drawing videos, when it comes to the inking stage in particular, I go a little quick for a few reasons. One, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time just outlining the shoe. Two, I know that even if something I do is considered sloppy in my eyes, for the most part when it comes out on camera, it's going to look pretty clean, especially when you add the color on top. So if you have a lot of stitching that's done on a shoe that's going to be mostly like, you know, dark colors like blacks or purples or blues, it's not even going to show up really. Like the line work is going to be there, but is it really going to be that noticeable as opposed to being on a white sheet of paper where it's just lines? No, not at all. All that being said, I did take a little bit of an L on this drawing. See, on the very bottom of the outsole, that iconic 11 outsole that I love so much, you're supposed to add a little bit of a curve, especially when it comes to the arch of the foot. I did not do that for this particular drawing because, well, I forgot. And it wasn't until that I was already going through and lining up the outsole when I realized like, oh crap, I was supposed to give that a little bit of an arch. Now at the end of the day, because I've already made it up to this point where I drew out the sneaker, I was already outlining most of it, I was not going to go ahead and scrap the whole drawing for a number of reasons besides the fact that I already put in all that work. Because this video is already being uploaded later than I wanted to on a Sunday, it would make no sense whatsoever to go ahead and redo the whole thing. And plus, what I love about these videos too is I want you guys to understand it's okay to make mistakes. Like, nothing you draw is going to be perfect because the simple fact is you're going to get better. So if you think something that you're doing right now is perfect, how is whatever you're doing now going to look when you do something that's better? It's just, you can't aim for perfection. You're not going to get it. Just aim for it being done. And these executions, when you do it over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again, is going to make your work that much better. It's going to get to the point where soon you're going to be drawing and whatever you think is going to look sloppy is going to be miles, miles ahead of what you used to do a year or two ago. 
I actually have a very good analogy for this. Think about the first time you ever shot a three-pointer. You're probably really young and it probably took a lot of work to go ahead and heave that basketball all the way into the hoop, right? Maybe it wasn't even a swoosh. Maybe it hit the backboard. It doesn't matter. The point is you made the shot. So the points counted regardless, right? But then as you got older and you practiced more, your form got better to the point where now you're over there like Steph Curry just swishing that thing like water, like it's nothing. Because at the end of the day, the result is the same. You made the basket. But what matters is now you can do it effortlessly and you can do it continually and you can execute often because you have the skill set to go ahead and do that. Versus chucking that basketball 50 times in a row until one time it hits the backboard and oh my god it went in. I see a lot of you guys giving me love in the comments section. I appreciate every single one of you. But guys when I say this some of you might be mad. I don't even think I'm that good. Like I'm being dead serious, I don't think that I'm that good at drawing. I have some skills for sure and depending on what I'm doing, I am pretty creative and I can execute on certain things. But in terms of being able to draw, I might. Here's what I do know. I am getting better each and every single day. When you focus on getting better as opposed to getting good, you get good. If that makes any sense whatsoever, don't think about it too much. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Nah, scrap that. that. That's a quote. That is a great quote. Somebody please post that on social media. Now, if y'all been watching my content, you'll notice that this past week, two interesting things happened. For one, I'm back to posting two new stencils a day and I had a new video uploaded every single day to the channel. By the way, if you don't already know, you can get all my stencils that I post for free over on my website, kickstart.com, self-plug. Besides Sunday's how to draw videos, which I do want to stay consistent like that, even though today's a little bit late, but it's all good. You notice that the rest of the videos throughout the week were digital illustrations. Not only were they digital illustrations, they were actually live streams, which is a lot of fun. And I think a lot of you enjoyed that content as well, because if you're not like the kind of person that likes to watch the actual videos, but you enjoy listening to what I talk about, especially when it comes to basketball and stuff, it was basically a podcast each and every single day. In case you're curious as to why I did that, well, the reality of what I'm doing with this quarter with school, work, freelance commissions, my side hustles, and just YouTube in general, all those different things at this very moment is adding up to a lot of time. Like my schedule this quarter is so busy and it's probably going to be mad busy up until the end of the year. Because that's the reality of the situation that we're looking at, it's going to be very, very difficult to upload the traditional drawing videos that I'm used to. These regular drawing videos take at least three hours in terms of filming, editing, rendering, and uploading. All that time adds up and I just don't have that time each and every single day to go ahead and do that. Maybe there's a way to go ahead and streamline the process to make it a lot more efficient, but I mean, I've been doing what, over 300 videos now? And I'm telling you, like when it comes to this process, there's not too much I can go to do to make it much easier because like I'm making it as easy as I can on myself and still taking that long. Like I don't got a team, I don't got a squad, it's all me. Like I'm the only one who's doing all of this. So I have to make sure I keep up with my grades. That's very important. And this quarter in particular, my classes that I'm taking are pretty serious. They require a lot of time. So I have to make sure I double down on that. And then I have my side hustles, my freelance work that I'm doing. And that's also very important to me as well. So because I understand that I'm just not gonna have the time to upload traditional drawing videos every single day, I knew I had to do something because I do want to upload content every single day I don't want to leave you guys hanging like that which is why I got back into doing the illustrations and that's especially why I got back into doing the live streams because that not only gives you the end result of doing the illustration but it also gives you guys pretty much like a podcast that you can listen to now here's the thing though and this is gonna be a little weird but I'm gonna to try to explain this long story short when it comes to YouTube and their algorithms apparently having the live streams uploaded as a regular video is not good in terms of the analytics and the metadata for the channel. Now you're probably thinking, all right, Kickstarter, just cut it out. What are you trying to say? Explain to me what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is what I think I'm going to have to do is whenever I do a live stream afterward, I can't just be directly uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to have the video listed as unlisted, which means if you ever want to see my live streams after they're already done and uploaded, you're going to have to go to a specific playlist, which I'm going to have linked in all my videos. And then I'm going to take the videos from those live streams. I'm going to edit them down and I'm going to upload them as live stream highlights that I'm going to have uploaded to the channel. So long story short, let's recap this real quick. You can obviously catch my live streams when they're happening, when they're live. If you want to see a live stream that's not live, that's like pre-recorded that I filmed yesterday, the day before.
for or whatever. I have a link to my live stream playlists where you can go and you can see everything, but it's not going to be videos that are going to be shown if you go through my channel feed because they're going to be unlisted. However, you can add unlisted videos to a playlist, so that's kind of the workaround around that. The live stream highlights will be uploaded to YouTube as regular content that you guys can see and I'll make sure that I post posts in the community tab so it'll show up in your feed whenever I add a new video to the playlist. So that basically means whenever a live stream gets uploaded, I'll make sure I'll put a post on it. I know it's really confusing. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but trust me guys, supposedly this is the right thing to do. And if you take nothing else away from this video, just know this one man crew is trying. I'm so stupid. <laughs> but that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoy these daily sinker drawing videos, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and bounce past that bell get post notifications. Don't forget to visit kickstart.com for all your sinker essential needs. Check out my how to draw playlist for a full list of how to draw videos. You guys already know that I'm doing daily content, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Yay!